Welcome, everybody, to Money 911, where we talk about health, wealth, and peace of mind, how they all work together. Now, before we get started with our awesome guest, which you already heard his bio, okay, over the top bio here, I just want to remind you to push that button, subscribe, review, keep the show rolling here. Tell your friends we got a lot of really hot guests in queue coming to you. So, anyway, John, I want to welcome you here today. Appreciate you coming. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm I'm super excited to be here. I like, you know, your title, the bull, you know, bulldog mindset. Because you really got to have that in the in the way the world is it keep on swimming, right? Keep on one step at a time. What tell me what what your turning point in your life that you know, why did you brand yourself as bulldog mindset? Yeah, yeah, that's great. So actually I used to my brand used to be called Simple Programmer because I was a software developer and I was making YouTube videos initially about software development and, and teaching software developers soft skills, career skills. And I started to get more into what I was doing in life, which was personal development and and financial things, right? I've been a real estate investor for a long time. And so what ended up happening was that I would be talking about self-discipline and getting rid of the victim mindset. And then naturally, organically, people on my YouTube video, they would comment and say, how do I get that bulldog mindset that you have? And so I thought, hey, you know, if other people are calling it the bulldog mindset, then that makes sense because my audience is already resonating with that idea. So that's where it really came from. And then really what it means to me is it's, it's like I said, getting rid of the victim mindset mindset. And instead of having a stoic mindset in life where you are not influenced or you know, your internal state is not influenced by the external, but instead you control that and you're kind of the master of your own destiny, you accept full responsibility for your life, whether it's your fault or not, because you're the one who has to deal with the problem. So that's it right there. You hit it right on. That's the target right there. And, you know, people as they're going through the world and all the confusion and, and everybody's got a different idea of success. What does success mean? Somebody think, oh, it's a you know, multi-million. Some people think it's just a good relationship, a connection with God. Everybody's got a different view of success. So what is your view of success? Yeah. So I, I don't agree with the with the traditional view of success. I don't believe that any external thing can give you success. I believe that true success is being able to accomplish what you want in your life to basically exercise your will upon the world. It's it's what I would call the definition of freedom as well. And then I would say that true success is living up to your capacity of what you're capable of, right? So for example, if I have a lot of money, right? I've made millions of dollars. I have fancy cars, women, the things that people would say makes a person successful. But then I wake up in the morning and I know that I did not do what I could have done today. You know, I was lazy. I, I was not driven. I didn't go after, you know, I didn't make the most of it. The world can tell me I'm successful. They can say, hey, John, you're, you, why, why would you be upset? You've done a good job. You're, you're by every definition successful. But I know deep inside that I'm not successful because I haven't lived up to my potential. And only I know my own potential, just like all of us knows our own potential. So it really doesn't matter what you have. And, and, and really, I would say, I was just doing a video on this, that, you know, the Stoics would, would say something along the lines of that, anything that could be burned up in a fire is not truly yours, right? And so really, if you, if you think about things that could be given from to you or taken from you, if you tie your success to those things, it can be, it can be lost. Whereas if it's something that's tied internally to who you are, your character, then it cannot be taken from you. And, and you choose every day to wake up and be successful or not. That's exactly it. And, and, you know, that's ancient wisdom, right? Because if it's an all on the inside, and little things mean a lot if it like accomplishing one thing on that list could just bring you more joy than something else it's it is all it's relative but it is center you you know it does right. come from within i think people get that the older you get you see all your friends and family cross over and the value i find that the value of life changes mm -hmm. even though i have a core you know, I know my core, I know God inside me, but there's this inside outside thing that we go through, especially people when they're starting, you know, they're viewing their life from all these angles. And a lot of people get stuck in self doubt and fear yeah. and failure because those 
fears and doubts are all set on the wrong success principles, right? What you exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So how do how do these you know how, what do you suggest for people to overcome the fear or the self doubt worry right? Yeah, I, I think I mean there's a, a few different angles, a few different ways of looking at this. One of them I think is to is to really be clear in what your goals are, right? I have this framework I developed called aspiration goal process, right? And, and and this framework is designed in order to be able to make it so that you actually set goals that you believe that you can achieve and then are able to execute on those, right? So many times in life, you know, you've probably been to some of those self-help seminars where they say, all right, write down your goals, right? And it's like, think big, hairy, audacious goals, right? The BHAG. And they're like, you know, whatever it is, write it down. And yeah. it's like, and then repeat these goals to yourself or, and that is, that's the biggest load of, of, of yes. crap that I've, I've ever heard in my life. Cause it's, it's, it makes you feel good, but it, it has no basis in reality. Just writing down extravagant things. Like if your mind doesn't have a connection between how it's going to be accomplished, it's worthless, right? So aspiration goal process, I call an aspiration, those things, right? So let's say I said, Hey, I want to make a million dollars this year. It's an aspiration. Why? Because I'm not in direct control of it. I just aspire to it. I, if I make that as a goal, it's silly. It's like throwing darts at a dartboard. If I hit it, maybe I I hit it because I you know I had the goal, or maybe I was going to hit it anyway. It doesn't make any sense, right? So instead, I take that aspiration and I say the the what we need to define from that aspiration is a goal that has a very high probability of achieving the aspiration, but the goal has to be something in your direct control. So. Uh, I asked a question to a lot of my coaching clients. I say, hey, what you know, if you have to ask the question of what could you do, what goal could you create that you could not possibly fail at meeting that aspiration, but it has to be something that's in your direct control, what would it be? And so that's how we bridge that gap. And uh, you know, for example, let's say that you you had the aspiration of making a million dollars this year, right? Well, then the goal might be something like, let's say you're in sales. Well, you could probably you probably know. All right. How many sales call? How much? What your average uh, close is? What your commission is, or, or whatever it is. And so, if you if you need to make a million dollars, you maybe you close one out of every five sales. Okay. So, and you know that your your sales are ten thousand dollars every time you close a sale. Okay. Now you can divide that up, and you can say, well, hey, if I want to make a million dollars this year, if that's my aspiration, what's in my direct control is doing X number of sales calls this year. And maybe it's, I don't know, 500 or a thousand sales calls. So then from that, you can derive a process and say, okay, well, that means that I need to do a hundred sales calls a week or how many calls per day. And, and that informs that. And then you actually have a belief that connects that goal to the aspiration. And now you can actually achieve it. And the thing about that is that gets rid of all the doubt, because when you know that you're on a path that if you do this, you will get this, it, it's going to make you. It's, it's going to make you confident, right? I, I did a example with 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 my big cro coaching group, and I asked the guys. I was like, "Look, how many of you guys struggle? Have struggled in the past with waking up early in the morning, right? You've made the commitment, but you failed to do it, right? You know, I've I've failed at this before in my life. And I said, "What if I could cure you instantly and guarantee that you're going to do this?" They're like, "No, you can't do that, John." I said, oh, "Check this out. If I told you." that you have to wake up at 4.30 a.m. every single morning for 365 days in a row. But at the end of that 365 days, I guarantee that I would give you $2 million. I said, how many of you guys think you could do it now? Right? Everyone raised their hand. I said, you'd probably be waking up. Actually, what you would really be doing is waking up at 3.30 in the morning, right? Just to make sure you didn't miss it. And you'd have three alarm clocks. You'd have physical alarm clocks all around your room just to make sure. Like, you, But the difference is belief because now you believe that if you do this thing, you're going to get this result. And so now action follows. And so the reason why a lot of young people have doubt is because they lack belief, because they don't have an actual plan that's going to get them to their goal. And because too many self-help gurus are telling them in conferences and seminars to write down their big goals without connecting it to actual actions and belief. Right. That's good because that that's actionable and it gives them like, I can do this instead of like some vague thing with no bridge to it. So that's that's really cool. So Bulldog Mindset, it really emphasizes the importance of taking action, right, and being decisive. So maybe you could give an example of like a tough decision that you had to do, like what 
where did you go with it? How did you, you know, manage it? Sure. Yeah. Actually, I'll just give you a really relevant one that's recent for me. So for the last, I don't know, 10 years or so, I've been making YouTube videos on YouTube. And for the last three or four years, I've been struggling to get even 5,000 views on my videos, even though I have 300,000 subscribers. And the reason why is because I've been literally just turning on my camera and talking. And while I can do that, a lot of times, it's not the best way to perform on YouTube. But the reason why I haven't up the production value of my YouTube videos is because I have all these other things going on, right? I'm I'm running this thing, I'm doing this thing here and there. And so what I recently had to do was I had to make a decision, a tough decision to cut everything, to basically have one focus in life at a time. Because you know, having multiple focuses, it 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 is it is such a distraction. It's putting your energy in multiple directions at once, but having a laser-like focus on one thing, but it's the hardest thing to choose to do this because it means dropping all these other things. It means killing your darlings because you know, it means means dropping some revenue from other places, right? It 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 requires some courage to be able to do this. But I did this, right? I, in fact, actually, my aspiration, it, it which informed this, was I had an aspiration of getting uh, a YouTube video that got 100,000 views in seven days, all right? Now, up to this point, I was only getting around 5,000. I was struggling at 5,000 on, on most of my videos for the last few years. But I said, in order to accomplish this, I need to focus only on this, drop everything else. So I created a goal from that aspiration, which was I'm going to create 10 super high quality YouTube videos. I'm going to script them out 100%. I'm going to hire a professional videographer, a professional editor. We're going to go through multiple revisions, right? We're going to create a masterpiece every time, but I'm not going to just do it once. I'm going to do it 10 times because that guarantees that I will get that result. I believe it in my mind. So far, I've put out five of those videos. There's still five more to go. The fourth one got 170,000. It's about 180,000 views right now. It, got, it, it hit 110,000 in the first seven days. Nice. So yeah. that's that's the the thing. That, I mean, that was a huge decision for me to make, to make that commitment. Because I, I think it's, it's so scary to burn the boats, to say, I'm going to go this direction, right? I was used to making three videos a week. This was one video every two weeks. And and a lot more work, and I put money into every every video, a lot of money into each video, but it but it paid off. So yeah. Well, uh, you know that right there should send everybody to your YouTube channel and check it out and make sure you right like it and and you just posted it. You didn't do any fancy marketing or SEO. Just it was the content and the AI picked it up. Is that kind of how that worked? Yeah, I I did, you know, obviously did a little bit of promotion. I created a trailer video for it on my Instagram and 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 put put that out, but majority of it was the fact that the click through it was high. So people were interested in the topic. I had a really good thumbnail and title that I spent a lot of time on. And then when they got into the content, the the viewership, the the length of time that someone watched was high, which sent a signal to the algorithm that, hey, this is a higher quality video and, and, and send that out. And pretty much every video I've put out since then has gotten a minimum of 20,000 views. And some of them are at 70, 80,000. I'm hoping to actually break 500,000 views in, in one of the next videos. There you go, John. That's great. So, you know, you talk about the importance of setting goals, having a clear vision for your future and setting the goals that are achievable, which you, you were talking about before. And so how do you stay motivated to keep on swimming, right? Keep that yeah. keep going forward. I struggled with this for such a long time. I spent many years pondering this question because I, I initially, my goal in life was to retire young. And I achieved that at 33 through real estate investments and in, in business. And I went to Hawaii and I was going to live on the beach, be a beach bum. And I sip Mai Tais on the beach and play video games. That was my dream. I was more miserable than I've ever been in my entire life. The most depression I've ever had because my mission was gone. My purpose was gone. And so what I had to, and, and then after that, I came back, I went back to work and I felt better but I kept struggling with wanting to stop doing stuff or am I just doing stuff to keep the money rolling in or keep to not lose my empire. I was, I was more focused on loss aversion, right? Which is the, right. the, a stronger motivator, right? And so it's only recently that I really put the two pieces together and connected everything. And I have been more lit up than I've ever been in my life. And what I have found is this, the simple definition, which is this, is that when you connect your heart to your work, 
you have unlimited em- energy. That's it. Art plus work equals energy. Yeah. And it's it's amazing. And I only discovered it on this journey through the YouTube, uh, through through changing my focus, because when I got obsessed about doing YouTube videos and making the best quality content that I could and writing these scripts and and going through the edits and taking all this time and, and not focusing on anything else and reading books about editing and, and videography, Oh my God. Like I could work forever. I, I, I could never get tired of it. I just, I love doing it. I love talking about everyone in my life has seen me light up and change and my energy just is, is unstoppable. And it took me so long to discover this truth, but, but uh, heart plus work equals energy. That's it. Oh, I, that is a fact. I went through that midterm when I was, you know, changing my business. And when I put give back heart, the purpose, it, you know, just gave me such like the older I get, the younger I feel the longevity, yeah. the energy, I got something to wake up for. And the purpose of connecting with people, that's the heart connection that we take, not the money in the bank. It's fun, but right. it's temporary. It'll, like you said, it'll burn up. And, that, and that's what people haven't been taught, quote, in schools, mm-hmm. and struggling, finding their passion and their purpose. So how how do you help people discover their passion? Because everybody's got a gift or an assignment, right? And how do you merge the passion and the purpose in someone's life? Yeah, yeah. I think it's a great question because Thanks. too many people take the wrong advice of just follow your passion, which I think yeah. it's not, that's not great advice either. Uh, Cal Newport wrote a book about that called So Good They Can't Ignore You, uh, which 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 is a really good book on that, on that topic. But purpose, I think, is something different. I think purpose, the way that I help people find their purpose, my definition of, of purpose is that you have to think about what is it that no matter what station you were in life, no matter what your circumstances, you would do, right? And for me, uh, it, it is learning about something digesting that information and sharing it with other people. And I've done that all my life in every job and every capacity. If I was a janitor, I would learn how to mop the floor better than any other janitor. And I would teach that information to other janitors, right? That's just who I am. That like, I'm, I'm already living my, you can't not live your purpose, but when you understand what your purpose is, then you can connect with it. And when you can connect with it, that's when you've got that power. Now, there is that aspect of heart, right? Where that's where passion comes in is you have to bring passion to your purpose. Passion doesn't create your purpose and passion doesn't drive you by itself. But once you know what your purpose is and then you you bring the energy to it, I, I forget the quote, but someone said that nothing great in life is accomplished without enthusiasm. And, and when you bring that enthusiasm, that passion to it, that's when everything starts to click and, and that's where you get that unlimited energy we we're talking about. It is. It, it's 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 the arc of the spark, right? The spark of the arc. I mean, it connects mm-hmm. it together, and and that the energy is unlimited when that passion's connected. That is so cool. Now, the, the big thing that a lot of people get stuck in is like working their brains out, right? They lose their health over their wealth, and and so how do you balance personal and you know your biz and your you know your life with with everything, right? Yeah, it's definitely been a challenge. <laughs> like I said before, I was doing a lot of things at one time. I have run a lot of marathons. I ran an ultra marathon last year. I'm in the gym lifting weights, right? I, I do a lot of stuff to, I was fasting and doing one meal a day. So I have a lot of different practices that I put in. But but the way that I, that, that I look at this and I think is most beneficial is to, incorporate some practice in your life and focus on that practice and then make it a habit and then put it into maintenance mode so you can choose another focus, right? So for example, if you're going to start running, it's going to take some time to develop that habit, that conditioning, get a routine in place. But once you do that and it just becomes something normally that you do and you have it scheduled on your calendar and you you know every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, you you go for a run or, or whatever it is, it becomes simple and becomes easy. And now it's just part of your life, part of your daily, just like brushing our teeth, right? I mean, we don't say, how do you manage to do all the things that you do in life and brush your teeth? We, it's a habit. We, we're, right. we, we know to do it. I mean, we, most of us make coffee, you know, we, we do things that are, that are habits. Uh, you know, Charles Duhigg has a great book called The Power of Habit, which talks about that. Um, and uh, and uh, James Clear has, has his book, uh, what is that? The uh, 
I can't remember the name of it now. It's 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 another habit uh, book, but um, but habit is, is so important. So I think that's that's the critical thing is that you you work on a discipline, you achieve some level of mastery on that discipline, and then you make it into a habit in your life, and then you can you can add things. But uh, but you still have to have a singular focus, right? And so what I do now, for example, to stay in shape is. I literally go to the gym twice a week. That's it. Cause I've already built the muscle. It doesn't require a lot more to maintain that. And I can work out in 20, 25 minutes. I do one set to failure, which is shown scientifically to optimize the results for the time that you get. And I'm able to stay you know, pretty lean, pretty, uh, uh, you know, to, to have a, a lot of strength. And then I run and, you know, but I'm not focused on major things right now in terms of running, but if I decide that I'm going to run another ultra marathon or something like that, then I would make that my main focus for a while. And I would let the business stuff go to the back burner and, and keep that in maintenance mode. But I think it's, it's shifting over time. You know, I almost think of it as I have four quarters in the year. So every three months I have a major objective or major goal, major thing I'm focusing on instead of focusing on all of them at once. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Definitely. So now how do you approach failure and, 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 you know, how do you learn from your past mistakes? Cause everybody gets tripped up and oh, I blew it, forget it and give up. Right. Yeah. And so I, I think that, that, that you only fail when you give up. I think failure with a mm -hmm. capital F mm -hmm. is when you give up that the lowercase F failures, those don't matter. Right. And, th and those are necessary steps in a progression. Right. And, and, and really, you know, I, I, one of my mottos is "you win or you learn," right? Which I think is is critical. But every time that you 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 learn, every time that you fail, you lowercase f fail, you only fail for one of two reasons. The first one is a lack of knowledge, and the second one is a lack of discipline. It always boils down to one of those two things, and it's up to you to identify which one of those things caused the failure in this case. And the other thing about this to understand is that. In some way, it's not your fault. And what I mean by that, you're still responsible for it. But if you lack knowledge about something, that's a unknown unknown. You couldn't have known it. So you had to fail in order to gain knowledge. Now, it's up to you to gain knowledge from that so that you don't make the same mistake again. But you can't blame yourself. You shouldn't get hard, down on yourself. You shouldn't beat yourself up mentally because you lack some knowledge that you had no way of knowing. Now you've got it. Now you should use it. Or it might be that you lack discipline. If you lack discipline, the only way to find out that you lack discipline is when you fail and you realize that, right? You you couldn't know it ahead of time. Otherwise, you you would have trained harder. You would have, right? It's it's not being prepared. And yeah. so in that case, then now you learn from that and you say, okay, I need to develop my discipline in this area. And now you can succeed. But without failure, it, it's, you know, uh, Carol Dweck, uh, the mindset, the new psychology of success, right? In that book, she talks about the fixed mindset and the growth mindset. People with the fixed mindset, they fear failure because failure means that they are lesser of a person or that they are not intelligent or not accomplished or or whatever it is. Someone with a growth mindset looks forward to failure because failure means that they have an opportunity to learn and to grow. And so if you have a growth mindset, you're seeking out failure. You need to get failure in order to, you see it as a stepping stone to get to where you want to go. Exactly. You know, they should have that as a mandatory class in school, yeah. really young, teach it really young. I mean, that is just, that is so good and solid. So finally, what advice would you give somebody that's like just starting out in their personal development and journey and wants to achieve success, quote, right, in their career, relationships, overall life, just right, what's a cherry on the top for them? I mean, the biggest thing, honestly, if I had to say the number one piece of advice that I give to young people, to anyone in life who is looking to become successful, again, by the definition that, that we defined here and accomplish things in life, is to read books. Read many, many books. There are so many good books out there. It, the, the average person on this planet has read maybe a handful of books in their entire life. Their worldview is so small. The, the, the amount of knowledge that they have or just exposure to ideas and the world out there is minuscule. If you read one book a week, if you even read one book a month, you will expand that view that you have on the world and the solutions of your problems and ways of thinking 
way beyond what the average human being is. And when you have that, then you you will have what you need. You know, it's better than any other stat strategy or tactic. I could give you strategies and tactics to how do you make money, invest in real estate, all those things. But having the wealth of knowledge, which, which really what I would call wisdom, mm -hmm. is is the most essential thing in life. Right, wealth of knowledge equals wisdom. That's great. That's great. Okay, now tell everybody what you're excited about, what you're you know you're working on, and how they can get in contact with you. Sure. Yeah. So I'm excited about doing my YouTube videos now. You know, that's the thing that I'm big, most excited about. Uh, I also have a program that uh, where I get to do coaching individually with people and get them excited about my aspiration goal process framework. I coach people through that. It's called the Well That Never Runs Dry Financial Freedom Program. And I teach people how to become financially free using this framework to achieve their goals. And uh, yeah, you can find that if you go to bulldogmindset.com. There'll probably be a little pop-up that comes up that asks you if you're you're interested, and then you, you know you can find out more about that, or you can check out my YouTube channel. I have a lot of information on there about how to get started with that. Yeah, you got some trending YouTube, so everybody's got to go check them out. And are you doing live events, virtual events? Just no, yeah, I'm not coaching? doing any any of yeah. I'm just doing uh, group coaching right now. I do some one-on-one -on -one coaching for mm -hmm. for some select people I have limited availability, but mostly group coaching, weekly group coaching calls, like in that, in that Well That Never Runs Drive program. Great. Beautiful building. You know, this has been great, John, because the, this is like basics of every, what people need to know to building a mindset. I mean, you know, it's a lot more than just the words and the depth of it. I really, really appreciate you sharing your blessings with everybody. And Again, one more thing. Is there anything else you want to share with everybody just on the as a as a final note? Hmm. I mean, I, I think we 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 covered pretty pretty in depth. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate you yeah. uh taking the time and having me on on your show. I, I do appreciate yeah. that. I really wanted I really wanted to get questions to bring your brilliance out so everybody else can rise with the tide here. So again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. There's so much to learn about healthy money. I hope today's discussion brings you one step closer to securing and protecting your future. So you can get started on the right foot, go to meetwithchrismeller.com and schedule your free financial fitness strategy session. Thank you for listening and please subscribe to Money 911 so you don't miss our next episode, which includes health, wealth, and peace of mind.